This is Twit. So let's talk about Starship. We let's talk about Starship. T-shirt. The fourth test flight yesterday, which was a real stand up and cheer moment. Now, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're switching gears here from a crew capable long duration spacecraft to something that's still flying without, as far as I know, a fully outfitted crew cabin, certainly mm-hmm. no life support. I mean, it's just kind of a big stainless steel shell at this point, but they, they reached most of their goals. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was a really uh, impressive test flight. All, all of their goals. I would say they, 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 yeah, we've got video uh, for, for the YouTube folks here. Um, I mean, SpaceX, you know, again, Starship is the world's most powerful rocket. It's 400 feet tall. And SpaceX has had, had not until, until this test flight <coughs> managed to get uh, either the Starship vehicle or its super heavy booster back to Earth at all. Like each time right. either it blew up during ascent uh, or they, they, uh, they commanded it to auto-destruct or as in the case on the most recent flight in March uh, 2024, it uh, broke apart. They broke apart on, on re-entry. Uh, and very interestingly, during this launch, SpaceX actually admitted that on that flight three, that the Starship was rolling uncontrollably because the RCS, the reaction control system, uh, failed due to a likely blockage. This flight seemed perfect. It launched at uh, a little bit later than uh, like about a, almost an hour into the window that SpaceX had uh, for it, but they had a clean separation. They had a that, that hot fire staging. The super heavy booster had live video coming all the way back down to Earth where it, it did its uh, uh, landing burn, and then you can see it in the video, uh, hit the ground, hit the water. Uh, yeah, here, here's, the, here's the moment. It hits the water and then it just topples over and then the, the camera feed goes black. And the the sound from SpaceX was tremendous. They were cheering and they were screaming and that was great. Meanwhile, the Starship itself kept going all the way through about a 65 minute flight to attempt another re-entry and that was something that it it didn't uh, it didn't manage to do on the most recent flight and there is a scene uh, near the end of the, the video where it i, I mean I, I have not seen any uh, as gripping uh, a view of, of of an aerospace flap in the history of of my space career it is this one video view of a, a flap on the starship vehicle and you're watching the the heat of re-entry burn away the the tiles and and the cladding yeah. around this flap it's getting hot pieces are breaking away the the camera screen goes dark and all of the people at space are, are like oh no ah uh. and then it comes back again and they cheer because the the camera's still there which means the spacecraft is still but there but the lens is cracked and then the lens it's cracks and, and, yeah. and then they lose the signal again and then it comes back again and and then they cross the 65 kilometer uh, uh altitude level which is about as far as they made it on the last flight and it keeps it keeps going down uh, as, as it was expected, and uh, and then there is a, a there was a moment where I actually audibly gasped when, and like laughed to myself. You know, I laugh when I get excited. Uh, we remember because, that from the last Starship test you were that, at. That, that's right, because and you can actually you can see it. Yeah, you can see it here uh, a, a bit because the, the yeah. in, in the video feed there's a little icon of Starship on the way on, on the bottom of SpaceX's screen, and for most of reentry, it is in a little pitch you know, for, to have that nice dynamic uh, aerodynamic uh, uh, approach uh, on the way down. And then you just see it very quickly flip all the way around and do the landing burn and then mm. uh, uh, turn again to be upright. And that was the telemetry that we saw for the big flip that they do for the landing. And it seems to have worked. Now we, we you know, no one was out there in the Indian ocean looking for it while waiting, watching, trying to watch it come down. So we don't know how much of the spacecraft actually was there. We know that at least one of the flaps was burnt to a crisp and, and uh, the SpaceX even made jokes later about it, which I think you want to touch on. Um, but it was absolutely phenomenal that they, they made it all the way through. Um, and so, I mean, arguably a Starship is a sexy rocket. It's giant, it's stainless steel, clearly a hardy, hardy rocket to withstand so much uh, burn through and still manage to make it. Uh, but you can't not look, you can't look away at, at those, at those launches. And this one did not disappoint. Part of me still wonders, Rod, how much more was left to go 
because this was just like a, a bunch of steel and fuel tanks and rocket engines, right? And right. and of course, all the brains to do all of that accurate steering. But if you're going to fly people to the moon, you need so much more than that. You need so many of it. And uh, and I, I'm wondering how many more of these test flights we have to see before they actually circle the Earth. This was not an orbital flight. Orbital speed, yes. Not an orbital actual well, flight. They didn't orbit any of that. Yeah. But what did you think of it? Well, I mean... I wasn't tracking it as close as you were because I was working on something else that day. But, you know, it, it's always kind of an emotional experience because it kind of feels like we're back. And and again, as I, as I say often, being a boomer, for me, it's like, oh, finally, we've been waiting since 1972 for something <laughs> that's actually capable of leaving Earth orbit, we hope. So that's fascinating. Oh, but wait, we have to refuel it somewhere between seven and 566 times to make it go anywhere else. <laughs> Different conversation. Um, but it was amazing to watch, as you said, that that moment of, of the, the moments of burn through were kind of uncanny because we've seen other spacecraft fail, sadly, a couple of space shuttles included, but we've never seen it real time before. Yeah. It's like, oh, look, there's a hole burning through the, the superstructure. So that was fascinating. I, I have to say, from a media standpoint, I get a little tired while the screen yelling at SpaceX. I'm excited too. Yeah. But it feels when they pull the camera back and having been there for some of their events, you know, they kind of grab everybody at the office and front load them down this little area ahead of the cameras. It's like, okay, everybody cheer, you know? And I think these people are genuinely enthusiastic, but it feels a little programmed. And again, coming from the age of, when, when, you know, the the NASA announcers and PAOs used to they used to talk like sports people. All right, <laughs> we have ignition. Apollo eleven has cleared the tower. It, it, it's gotten much bouncier, and yeah. if you've been monitoring social media since this, there's a lot of grumpy old men, um, my age and, and many younger actually, who are saying, you know, uh, who are these these candy drops they have doing the <laughs> the live narration for this? But you know what? It's a new age societies change we have social media we have for god's sake space.com not that i'm accusing <laughs> you of any of this but you know we've got a lot more venues for coverage and spacex and in spacex's flight and their control rooms they should be able to do whatever they want but i wanted to mention um you know you're saying how much more is there let's not forget that i believe this was the year that uh, Yusaku Mezawa was supposed to be circling yes. the moon with yes. seven or eight of his closest friends in the Dear Moon flight, which meant, you know, being capable of reaching Earth orbit, leaving Earth orbit into translunar ejection, orbiting the moon, or, or at least doing a flyby and then coming home. So that's life support seats for that many people. Um, you want to make sure it can re-enter because it was supposed to re-enter under its own, w would be transferring astronauts to anything else to come home. So that's a lot of steps away from where they are now. And as and, uh, and actually, sure actually, Rod, he just it was canceled that. Yeah, it was supposed to be last year, actually, last 2023. Year, okay. 2023 was when it was supposed to be. Yeah, and that, and you, it, it, they actually canceled. You saw him out canceled his order of the Starship Moon mission. Uh, on June first, the same the same day as the Starliner first launch attempt, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, you know I understand. I mean, he was financing a lot of the early development right. of 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 this um, uh, of this. Well, this some. Project. I mean, I think it was it was something south of a billion dollars, and and we don't know if he's getting any of that back. Yeah, I, I would expect yeah. not. That's that's water under the bridge, uh, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, and I do. My heart does go out for the eight people, the artists, and the two alternates. There was a uh, that were selected for that flight. You know, that they, they it wasn't something that that they had asked for, but it was like a gift that was given to them. Yeah. And now it's been kind of wrenched away. And uh, and I guess there's a there's a lesson there to not not count your chickens, I guess, before they're fully hatched. But um, uh, but you know, they're understandably really upset. You know, about why. You would sign on to something like that, only to find out that, like a, you know, a couple of years later, it's 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 down the down the tube. Um, so you're telling me you feel bad for your comp your competitor Tim Dodd. Well, yeah. Well, the competitor. Well, that's you know, good he, of you. We do we do different things. I feel I feel bad if if someone yeah. came up to you and said, "Hey, Rod, 
you want to come with me on a private private trip to space i'll pay for it man I'll knowing it knowing what I'll i know about everything. about uh, th- this project at the moment i would be breathing a big sigh of relief right now so, yeah, ooh, yeah. dodge that bullet i don't have to be embarrassed and check it out at the last second but yeah i get your point but i think tim dodd the everyday astronaut as well as all of the other uh, musicians and artists and filmmakers that were selected to go understood that they wouldn't fly until it was ready to go right right, right. and in fact at least one a photographer mentioned uh because we did a piece actually just came out today on space.com about the dear moon uh participants uh who said look if it was just me i would just wait until it's ready to go i I got no problem waiting right Right. um and so they're not not writing the big checks they're not writing the checks and and perhaps you know it was time for the next deposit and mizawa was like you know what i already flew to space he bought a teapot not one but two tickets to the international space station already did a whole big video thing about it you know maybe he's like you know what that was enough for me and uh, and i'm gonna i'm gonna move on and and do other things and just want to finance it you know spacex your project is in a good place you've got nasa contracts to land people on the moon you know thanks (laughs) so and and by the way that that extends the point of when we're talking about um you know, work left to do. All we've talked about so far is getting to orbit and getting the pieces home. Yes. Hopefully yes. safely for reuse eventually with people in them. The lunar lander version is a whole different bag of apples. And I also just wanted to mention before we go to that, and we have to take one more break, um, the the uh, commentators for the launch after it was over, as I'm sure you saw, took out their little chrome spacex rocket torches and some some marshmallows and said okay let's celebrate well uh, there's <laughs> some more starship coming with the emphasis on some mores and both of them with both camera angles started torching their marshmallows and the, the two young ladies theirs caught on fire and they s- stood there with a big smile on their face holding this burning marshmallow but I had a lot of conflicting you, you, emotions at that moment, right? Because all I could think of were heat shield tiles, space shuttles, things like that. And it's like, you know, that is not your best look for, for this experimental flight. You, you, you forgot the most important fact. And that's the fact that they, they, they toasted their marshmallows with starship shaped lighters i I said that yeah yeah. oh oh, oh, i completely missed it i spaced out on it because they sell those spacex sells those lighters you can buy them at spacex's i think they're like 50 60 dollars something like that maybe more i don't know um yeah and the flame is is where the the rocket engines are which is great it was just the burning marshmallows felt like a bit of a misstep there and they have described their dragon capsules as toasty mar actually elon musk has called them that as toasty marshmallows uh uh, when they come back from space, they do, they do kind of have that look. So in fact, Kate Tice, uh, uh, the NASA, the, uh, the SpaceX, um, uh, uh, manager that, uh, that toasted her marshmallow there actually had it with some coffee after the, uh, the end of the, the launch campaign. Uh, she, she tweeted out a, a nice photo of it, uh, <laughs> just to give everyone a, an update on that marshmallow status. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out this week in space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.